Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. It's a late game tank kill. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could. Boy. This is part of it. I I thought you were taking that Gemini to test the new changes to it, not. What do you mean new changes? You, you, it's just forty meters. You need to test that. It's just it's add add five meters. This is my testing. So Foxhole just came out with an update that should be added to the game for the next war. Now we don't know when that will exactly be, but given that War 90 just started last week, I would say that most likely Update 49 will be dropping at the end of May. And with it comes this incredibly weird tank, the Gallagher Highwayman for the Wardens. It's a cruiser tank with dual 20mm autocannons, and it's bad. But it's also really good? After over an hour or so of testing this, I'm kind of confused, and you're going to see why. But before we dive into that, I do want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Apex Gaming PCs. I've partnered with these guys to help make getting the right gaming PC easy, and with three different tiers to start off depending on your needs and budget, as well as the ability to fully customize your computer, such as adding more RAM, upgrading graphics cards, or even adding RGB lights, you can really make this computer your own. And if you click the link in the description below and use code MOY at checkout, you can save up to $250 on your purchase. Click the link, get an awesome PC, support the channel, and save $250. Bucks. Easy as that. But enough of that, let's get on with the video. So when this tank was first announced to the dev branch a few days ago, many were excited. I mean, it's the outlaw, right? One of the coolest looking tanks in Foxhole. It's got a boost, it's got dual cannons, it's got that cool little rounded kind of sloped turret. It's awesome. And a separate commander slash MG turret. This is going to be a cool tank. But then we all looked a little bit closer and saw that this only has a 30 meter range. And after mag dumping its 20 millimeter cannons into this lodgy, the truck wasn't dead. Thankfully, however, that highwayman is not the highwayman I was able to test. The dev branch was actually just updated with a new patch, and in it, this tank has had quite a decent buff. First, real quick before we get into that, I do want to kind of rant for a second on the dev branch. Now, you guys who play Foxhole know that this is a sandbox game, right? The players make everything, we scrute material, refine it, toss stuff in factories, research various tech tiers, and progress through the game doing every little bit of it ourselves. We're fine with that. It makes sense in a war game, it's super cool, it's really immersive, but in the dev branch, Apparently, we also have to do all of that ourselves. The devs are asking us to go and play and test stuff that they've made, but we have to go through the entire process to research all the tech tiers, to get all those vehicles out, to make the materials. It's just a blank slate, and we've got to do it, and if we don't do it, then nothing gets tested? It's ridiculous. And the funny thing is, after every dev branch, the Royal Spuds have come together and have had a few colonials and wardens on each side in order to create a giant playground where we could share equipment and test things. It's a pretty common thing to do since how else can you properly test equipment and give feedback to the devs when it exists on both sides? Well, we made this playground camp a couple days ago, and today the dev branch reset that completely wiping away nearly an entire day's worth of building and testing. All the hours that we spent doing all that was gone. All the bunkers they built that were teched in order to do other testing was also gone. So I log in and the testing branch is, well, it's not only all gone, but now apparently we have to research and also unlock all of the items ourselves as well. Tanks weren't unlocked. Sledgehammers weren't unlocked. Nothing was, a, even some RPG ammo wasn't unlocked. 40 millimeter ammo wasn't unlocked. So if you don't know how tech works in this game, in this testing branch, you actually have to go around, scrape the materials yourself, find the tech mats like the iron, aluminum, and copper, refine those, and then put those into engineering centers to research your faction through the entire tech tree. Now you do have these little magic boxes so that way you can replicate things and it does go a little bit quicker or okay a lot a bit quicker but it's still a ridiculous amount of effort just to try to get one piece of equipment that you want to test. I'm not kidding it when I say that I probably spent two to three hours just trying to get one tank made and into a location where a colonial player had a tank so we could do some testing. And on top of that the colonials for whatever reason 
they had teched all of their tanks, but they didn't tech any sledgehammers. So when Canadian, who helped me do all of this, wanted to actually build a tank, he didn't have any of the materials to do it. I actually had to go and drive and give him materials just to build a colonial tank. And on top of that, I even had to build the own garage to do all this stuff. A huge waste of time and also kind of the reason why this video is coming out a little late. What's up, notification crew? I guess you had trouble sleeping tonight, so now you're watching the Highwaymen tank video that came out at midnight on Moist channel. How you doing? Anyway, I think it's absolutely crazy that there isn't some button or skip area for the dev branch if you do want to just click some of these tanks or equipment and just try it, since ultimately the devs are asking players to try things that they are changing. And if we don't try it, then it's going to be implemented in the game and it might be broken. It's a little ridiculous, so please, devs, if you're listening, that would be a fantastic change. Give us some skips. All right, so, okay, back to the Highwayman. This tank was bad. Like, it was horrible on release, but they seem to have tweaked it a little bit so that the 20mm autocannons actually now have a pretty decent chance of penetrating subsystems. These subsystems are tracks, turrets, and the fuel tank. Now, it's still all RNG, and we did have a few times where I tracked the enemy tank in one shot, and then other times it just missed completely, but this is 100% a tank that needs to dive into the side of enemy tanks that may be out of position. It will disable the turret, then try to track it, try to fuel it, do everything it can to effectively knock that tank out of the fight, even if it doesn't kill it itself, so that way infantry or perhaps other friendly tanks can finish the job. It does start to tear through armor fairly well as it shoots since the rapid rate of fire, but as you can see, the bloom of the gun is just kind of crazy. I actually found it a bit better to tap fire than hold left click so I could track my shots a bit better. It's still RNG, but I felt like I was able to miss a lot less. To show you, here's a few examples of some of our testing. Okay, so this should be able to disable the turret of the Kroneska, right? If I just shoot right into the turret. Yeah. Theoretically, yes. We didn't look left. Okay, second nice. shot missed. That Ten. pinned. Missed. Missed. You see what I mean? Like, it's Deflected. so hard to aim. Pinned. Missed. Pinned. Missed. Pinned. Deflected. There we go. There you go. Congratulations, yeah. And that was just, and that was waiting for the perfect, like, shots. Like, that sh that's it, right? I mean, that's the top of the turret. But... Yeah, but I can't hit mid turret. I, I would have to hit it right you'd here. You'd have to aim, yeah, you'd have to aim mid turret. Like right here? Yeah. Thirteen shots. Okay, so you can do it, you have to aim it right. That's a, but this is also Kroneska. Go try to go slow uh down the road. I'm gonna try to track you. Oh, oh, dude, I mean, that's You get wrecked. This is going to disable somebody's component in one shot. Oh, bro. Dude, that's... They must have changed that because that. Oh, 87? I mean, dude, they that's did tearing damage, through it, right? actually. Oh. What the fuck, you guys? This is bullshit. Yeah, I mean, that's this tank, right? Yeah, right, then you're fueled. Yeah, you're, so you're gone. It's it's RNG. Dude, like we, so lucky, dude. Like we dude, did a head on. Fueled too? Are you kidding? How is that fueled lucky though? Track. This is now we've we've replicated it three times, so they did change it. Yeah. See, now you can't run out. Now you can't hit the back. And now you just gotta go for the tracks. Oh, I. It messed the reload for some reason? I clicked and it canceled the reload. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, but see, now I'm getting unlucky bounces. It's all RNG. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. I haven't uh, been able to do anything now. Okay, at one point, more, I fired 65 rounds of the turret of a Spaffa and I, uh, I didn't turret it. Don't kill the Spaffa, please. We can use it still. We can use it. Oh, okay. Oh, is that a one shot or a two shot? Two, two shot. Two shot. Okay, so it is super. So we got the turret, but all of our other RNG rolls just didn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hit turret up in the front. Yeah. If it had more range, I would be far less perturbed about this. Seven meters 
I think is kind of the max that you can do. I would be okay. But like, I, it's also just like the damage is so lackluster that yeah, maybe you turret it, maybe you track it. I find it hard to believe that you're actually going to be able to kill an enemy tank with this thing. Also, so it would I always... Think. The person mm -hmm. said the bloom was going to improve, but like still a quarter of your mag is missing at that range. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like see, a look, quarter you can... of your mag is missing. So with that, I don't know if I like this Highwayman in his current form. I think I more like the idea of it. I think it's going to be a really interesting tank to play, and it could be really fun diving into an unsuspecting tank and knocking it out just before it realizes what's happening, but I really think it's going to need a slight range buff to maybe 35 or 37 meters just to make it less of a death sentence if it does charge in, because it has to. At 30 meters range, it can barely do anything. Additionally, I think it's also going to be one of those tanks that people just will play wrong all of the time. This is a tank that should not be in a tank line, and instead should almost always be laying in wait off to the side and ready to pounce whenever it sees something out of place. Unfortunately, you're probably going to get a lot of tank crews that see that it looks like an outlaw and will dive headfirst into an enemy tank line and get absolutely whacked. It's not to say they should change it for new players, but it's probably going to happen. At 170 R mats, that's also really, really expensive. Overall, I think I like it. I hate it in a way that part of me thinks it's going to be a huge waste of R mats for little gain, since you'll probably only trade tanks at most of the time that you use it, but the other part of me sees it as a tank with an incredibly high skill ceiling, which is something that should be encouraged in a game like Foxhole. Not everything has to be new player friendly, and this could be the tank that would absolutely shine with a good crew. But what do you guys think? Yay or nay on the Highwayman? Should it have more damage? Maybe it should pin subsystems a little better? Maybe it needs an extra little bit of range, like 35 or 37 meters? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and also if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.